Good morning or afternoon depending on your time zone. My name is Tim Dewey from DV Flora and welcome to our Facebook Live presentation. We're here today with Smithers Oasis and a very special guest, Sharon McCookin, who is AIFD, AAF and PFCI certified. Uh, Sharon today is going to give us a presentation on sympathy with a holiday twist. Uh, also, for our customers, please enter in your DB customer code to win, a, win some prizes. Uh, so without further delay, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Sharon. Uh, thank you for uh, giving us your time today. Uh, and I'm really not going to help just wearing this apron. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Tim. But you could stay and help. <laughs> thank you, Sharon. We are really excited to be here with you today. We have some great ideas to share with you about products that make both sympathy and the holiday a lot easier. Kelly Mace is with me today. She'll be answering your questions. So if you have questions, please put them online. We'll try to answer as many as we can and they will answer the others afterwards. So a big thank you to DV Flora for having us today and allowing us to share ideas with you. We're gonna start with sympathy. But the really cool thing about a lot of these products is not only do they do sympathy, they can also be great for holiday. So since we're in the holiday season, we thought we'd throw in a few little highlights of what you could use. For example, our cross, then the paper mache makes a fabulous cross for sympathy work, as you can see this particular one created for you in advance. Makes a great cross for sympathy, but think about it in the holiday season, it really would make a great decor piece for holiday as well. Instead of the hypericum, we could go with holly berries. Let's add a few little flowers in here. While I'm adding the flowers, I wanna to talk to you about some of the things that we do to make our flowers last longer. You know, longevity is the ultimate objection to buying flowers. So if whatever we can do to make our flowers last longer, creates newer cells in the long run. And that's very important to us. So when we use our knife, we wanna cut a sharp slant on the stem of the flower so that it inserts into the foam and drinks the water. It's important to use floral foam because it is a water source for the flowers and helps them to last longer. We also want to take the time to use flower foods when we're working with our foams and our flowers just so that the flowers are fed and last a longer period of time. So you can see in this cross, I'm popping in roses and hydrangea. If you're using hydrangea, that's a question I get most often, how can I keep my hydrangea fresh? You wanna remove every leaf, even the little ones, because that wicks the water away from the bloom. It's a great idea to dip the stem in quick dip and then put it into your water that has Express 300 flower food in it. Then you wanna be sure that you suggest to the customer that they add water to the design as it goes, just pouring directly from the top of the foam and letting it soak down as opposed to putting the paper mache down into water to soak. Now, as I add my materials to this, I'm thinking, you know, I could do red carnations, red roses, holly, and I could make a Christmas design. I could use some curly willow or some other branches to add a natural look to it because this season, natural is really in and very popular. As I come across with my hypericum at the back of my design, I'm trying to cover some of that form that shows with the paper mache a good thing is that it kind of has a natural look to it also in case any of it does show. We want to add these into our design and see how easy it is. You just insert into the foam, the flowers hold into place, and it makes a long lasting design. I could also see this done very well mixing all greens, all foliages creating a really kind of a rustic look. Again, sharp points with those stems so that they insert into the foam and hold. If you cut across and the stem is kind of rounded, then it can kind of move a little bit in the foam by making them arrow shaped with a point. Not only does it open up the waterways, but it also holds the flowers into place easier long-lasting little button palms 
are great for designs like this. If you'll notice, my flowers are not all the same height. See how the heights are varied? That adds dimension to your design. Gives it a, more of a 3D look. These would be attached very easily to an easel if this was for sympathy work. I like to use my uh, bind wire to make a hook for the back of it so it goes right onto that easel and stays in place. So here we have another version of the cross. And so there's our sympathy cross that could be a Christmas design using the cross for a church service or something of that nature. Here we go. Now you'll see I have a couple of Vannas helping me get the things off of the stage. We have Karen and Mike and of course Kelly answering the questions online if you have some. Please let us know. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this brick tray. Brick trays come in single, double, and triple size. They work really great because we simply add our midnight foam into them. We'll want to soak that in water. How do you soak your foam into water? You just want to drop it on the top and let it sink in on its own way so that it can fully saturate down into the, the very center of the foam. Have you used midnight foam? It's one of my favorite new things because it just kind of disappears from the design. Look at this one that I created in a brick tray earlier. And you'll see that I purposely left a little bit of the midnight foam showing. And the purpose of that was it gives a little more dimension where it's in and out of the design. I took my curly willow branches and little pieces of my bind wire and starting with the tips from this direction and then the tips from that direction, opposite directions, that allowed me to have tips and the stems on opposite ends. It gives a little strength to the design. And then I simply use the bind wire to bind the stems together. It's called exposed mechanics. With exposed mechanics, then you can let the, the materials that you bound it with show. It's a part of the design. So then I simply tucked in my materials, much like I did with the cross, and then added a little bit of the lilies. They weren't open yet, lily buds still, but that's really great because it lets the arrangement evolve. They'll open slowly over a couple of days and that makes it look nice for the customer. So with the brick tray, a great thing is that's a lot of water. Each block of foam actually holds two quarts of water. So that's a lot of water for your design. You want to be sure and tell your customer that they need to add water again. And the great thing about the midnight foam is it starts out gray, goes to black when you add the water, and then as it's fading back out to gray, it tells your customer, time to add more water. So lots of ways you can make tablescapes for sympathy work like life celebrations or for holiday design like family gatherings. Thank you, Mike. Sharon, we have a question from Instagram. Okay. Uh, aside from watching this video, are there any online courses or anything you recommend for florists to learn about sympathy design? If you go to our website, oasisfloralproducts.com, then there's lots of videos, there are pictures that you can use that um, to mimic in your design to work with our designs so there's a lot of information there also I write a blog for Oasis it comes out every Tuesday and we just had two blogs about sympathy work one was on September 4th and one was on September 24th so go back in the series of blogs to reach the blog directly is on the website go to oasisfloralproducts.com forward slash floral dash ideas or just go to the oasisfloralproducts.com page and scan down to the bottom. Go back in the line and there's two really new articles about sympathy work that could be helpful to you too. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to do some garlands. Because with sympathy work, let's show you. With sympathy work, a lot of times we're changing. Cremations are becoming a really big part of our sympathy industry, the bereavement industry, because in 2016, 
tipping point happened, 50.1% of services were no longer funerals, they were cremations. And it's grown since then. The projection is that will be 80% cremations by 2035. And in Japan, it's already currently 99.97%. So we need to make some new traditions for cremations because it's different from funerals. There's not a long visitation, there's not a viewing of the body. So what can we do? I think the garlands are a good solution. We have two kinds of garland, the flat um, sealed brick and then we have the cylinder one. So of course soaking those in water. If you see on the sealed brick, notice the bottom is covered and so you can put it directly down and then you just place the urn into the design in the way that you would like for it to float. I've left two here that so you can see what the, it looks like previously done. We ran greens around the outside of the edge and because it's netted, it holds it in place. So these could have just foliages in place, it could have all of one type of flower or it could have the mix of it. We can also do that with a different type of garland as we said, we have two varieties here. This is the cylinder. And we just add that right around onto the memorial table. Now here's one that's not finished, so I'm gonna add some flowers in and show you. So easy to pop in place. Notice that the greens are at different heights. That gives you that um, depth in your design. And then you just simply cut your flowers. If I'm doing a lot of the same height flowers, sometimes I'll take snips and just cut the whole bunch of carnations at once or the whole bunch of roses at once. The lesser number of times you touch a flower, the more money you make off of it. So you wanna see how you can do it as simply and quickly as possible. So adding in my daisy plums just tucking them right into the design. If it's something that's going to hang and you worry about the flowers once they have dehydrated some, getting a little loose, I like to use the product Floralop, which is a, an adhesive that the glue absolutely is absorbed in by the foam itself, holds it into place. I find that that's good if I'm gonna drape garland. I like to use that to hold it in place. But adding these little daisies in, you can see it's just a simple matter. These come in uh, lengths of nine feet and you can cut them apart as you would like them to be. So you think, okay, how many flowers does it take to manage that? The best way to gauge that is to simply take one of the cylinders, calculate how many flowers it has, and then do the math to multiply it times the number of cylinders you have. Now, this is for sympathy. We're talking about cremation urns and all, but what about the holidays? What if you wanted to do a tablescape, a runner down the table with your favorite collection of Santas or angels or reindeer or something of that nature? These would be perfect designs for that as well because you could just place it on your table. I like to use a little plastic under it myself and then add in whatever collectibles you have. Works great for both holiday and sympathy, don't you think? Let's look at another sympathy design. Oh wait, I almost forgot. I was going to add in for the holiday just some Christmas ornaments and suddenly my design has changed. Now you can also do this adding in small little pumpkins in place for Thanksgiving and then the day after Thanksgiving pull those out and place instead pomegranates or apples or pine cones. It's always fun when you can get double use out of a design, don't you think? What's that called again that you're using? These, Not the, the, uh, the millimeter rolls. Oh, the cylinder, and it is the cylinder garland, floral mm -hmm. foam garland. Okay, we'll have some of these that we'll photo after the design takes place and you'll be able to see them a little better but you get the idea makes it a Merry Christmas don't you think we'll slide these off 
Now, if we have an urn that we want to use for the, crew, the memorial table, it's really important that it be easy to transport because a lot of people like to take them not only to the service, but then sometimes they want to take them back to the nursing home or the hospital or the office or something of that nature. I like to place these on, um, in large size Lomi dishes because they are wet on the bottom, so you can just put them into a Lomi. A black Lomi disappears more so than um, a clear one, so I like to use that. In this particular one, I've created a design using that. I just simply use the eucal seeded eucalyptus, the purple hydrangea, and look at that gorgeous freesia. That's one thing I really enjoyed today at DV Flora, is the flowers have been so fresh and beautiful. Kelly, do you have a question? Yes, um, we had a question on the garland um, on doesn't the table linen get wet? So how do, would you address that? I, the question is, does the table get wet with the table linen? I mean, the table linen on the table get wet from the garland. I like to put just a little bit of plastic under it just, to, just because I want to be sure. The other thing that you can do is if you have small, uh, like little plastic dishes that fit under it, on the larger size like this, I suggest you use Lomi dishes to cover it. And strangely enough, you think, well, clear is the, the best way to go, but I find that black in the Lomi dishes disappears more so. Now, in this beautiful urn we created, just a simple arrangement. This works for sympathy. Wouldn't this be pretty for a holiday as well? If you've got a beautiful bowl, a punch bowl, um, a serving bowl that has a beautiful salad in it or something of that nature. Can you see a lot of uses for this holiday and wedding and special event and even sympathy? I'll give this one back. Now, this is another shape. We saw the round with the foam and we also have the square and we'll look at that in just a few minutes. Now, one thing you may have used, if you've been doing flowers for a long time, like I have 46 years, and I started before I was born. But if you've been doing it for a long time, then you know these products, the Flora Cage and the Flora Cage Grande. We can't live without those. I like to use those at the holiday season because it makes a great door badge or a, a design to go beside the door or on a railing or something of that nature. The two sizes make it work really great because let's say you're doing it on a railing inside of a house. This really secures into place with your bind wire really well or you can cable tie it in place. So this is the basic lines of the design that I created for this design that I might want to hang. Like if I had two, I could put them side by side on doors. A lot of times when I have my tulips, I don't want to have the tulips in the, the foam as long because they open up very quickly. So I'll just keep them in water until it's time to deliver the design and then add the tulips in. Now, when you're using tulips, of course you don't want to use those outdoors. This would be something for an interior design. And you have to realize the tulips are gonna open. So if you allow a space for them to open and have the freedom just to be themselves, because they're both phototropic and geotropic, they react to gravity and move toward the light. If you allow those materials just to be free form, it adds a beauty to your arrangement, just a kind of a natural wild look to it. But if your customer doesn't like the look of open tulips, then you need to choose a different flower for the design because you know they are going to. And that's true of weddings as well. This would be something that I would think would be nice to use for a wedding. If you use this on a table at the rehearsal dinner and then you added candles all around it and then the next day pop them in place on the doors, people will invest more in designs that they can get double use out of. For me, I would like to vary the heights of the candles for this. When you're working with candlelight, if you light the table, like for example, if this were a centerpiece and I wanted to light the table with it, then I would want to use votives or something 12 inches or less. 
And then if I wanted to add light to light the faces of the people around the table, then I would want to use 15 to 18 inch tapers. But if I wanted to light the atmosphere and make a party room out of it, then I might want to go 24 to 36 inches above. How about if we did all of it together? So now this centerpiece with all that candlelight can be the next day changed to a wall item. Do you like that? I think it's a lot of fun. Now we said we would come back to the square on the, the forms to hold the, the urn. And here it comes. I didn't have a square urn to fit in there, so we're going to pretend. That's what I like about creative audiences, is you can always pretend really well. So this is an urn with the top. I know you can see that. And I just tuck it right in on top of my styrofoam to hold it in place. Now, when we sell to people, we want to do it in three prices. We want to do budget, moderate, and exceptional. And so in this particular one, this would be, my budget would have been just everything very low. My moderate would be adding the height to the design. And my exceptional would be to add a lot more roses and tulips and give my design a little more color and form and fragrance. So giving the customer the opportunity to decide what price range they want to spend is very important. Sometimes people will ask me, how do you recipe flowers? And why would you recipe flowers? It's very important that you be able to give your customers something different. 80% of our business comes from 20% of our customers. And those 20% give to the same 20% of their friends and family. So if you're offering the same look, and the same flowers, and the same colors season after season, they're not as likely to give the same gift. Would you give the same sweater over and over? I don't think so. So what we want to do is to make our flowers as changeable as fashion might be for clothing. So each season, if you decided to menu designs, let's say we did glass in the spring for our containers, and maybe we did baskets in the summer, pottery in the fall, metal in the winter, something of that nature. And we just changed around our color harmony and our types of flowers we use. Then we've got a different look to offer with each season. And that makes it very interesting to our customer. So if we then take our designs and change out the pricing, let's say we do five different price levels and we have horizontal, vertical, round, vary it. Then by menuing that, going through and saying for this price it would be X number of flowers, for that price it would be X number, it gives you a pattern that you can sell from. And that way anybody that answers the phone in your shop knows what's available and at what price. So I really encourage you to menu those designs Create your recipes, create a book of recipes, and change it out every season. Okay, I'm going to give you this one. Thank you. Now, the really cool thing about Midnight Foam is that it just disappears. So as you can look at this arrangement, you don't even see the foam. It just recedes in the arrangement. Remember when we had to cover everything with a leaf or we had to add something to the outside? We can still do those things if it's a part of our design, but we no longer have to. So in this particular design, cut my hydrangea. Remember what we said about hydrangea. You want to cut it really sharp, remove all those leaves, and use quick dip. I'm putting into my design my lilies that aren't open, but I really don't mind that because it's going to make my, my arrangement evolve and last longer and give more satisfaction to my customer in that way. Vertical designs are really popular right now. In fact, vertical and horizontal are the two most popular forms because we're kind of getting away from so much space in our homes and we're, we're pulling in a little and we want to get closer with our family. So vertical is less space taking. 
and then horizontal lets us gather around the table with our family and friends like we want to do for the holidays. have your arrangements all prepped and ready to go. A simple matter to tuck your flowers in. If you know that you have a volume of arrangements to make for a wedding or for a corporate event for the holidays, it's a good idea to go ahead as we've done, clean your flowers, prepare them together, the ones that you'll be using together, and then strip them, have them ready. When the flowers come in, instead of putting them in the cooler in buckets and then you've got to take them back out and do that again later, just go ahead and prepare them. Strip them, count them, have them separated, and then just pull them out and make one arrangement after the other so quickly. Again, the lesser number of times you handle a flower, the more money you make off each stem. So we want to look for ways to condense that time-consuming part of creating designs. Now we're looking for your questions. Anybody have a question? Kelly, anyone asking us questions? Uh, no, we're, um, everyone's loving the video so far. Okay, fantastic. Because we want to share with you information about the products and DV Flora sharing their gorgeous flowers along with us, but we also want to know what you need to know. Working with the paper mache again, good idea just to put it down and add water on the inside. I like to take the quarter inch waterproof tape and wrap around all of the design so that it gives me a little extra on my structure. And then to create the design, we ran a little bit of greens around the side of it and then taking the plumosa, the long stem of it, and just adding it loosely around through some flowers to help hold in place and let it kind of escape a little. Kind of looks like your hair in the mornings. It just kind of has that free and wild look. So then we're going to fill this in. I added a few just for the sake of time. But now we'll add the rest of them. Sharon, I do have a question. Okay. Um, so don't process and hydrate flowers first. Just put them right into the design, even with foam. Thank you. The question was, do you put the flowers directly into foam without hydrating first? No. What I was saying is you put the flowers, process them, and put them in water in the cooler. And then when you pull them out to put them into your foam, you already have them counted out and processed in terms of taking all the off. So you, you definitely want to hydrate flowers before you put them into the foam. And you want to hydrate the foam before you put flowers in there. Thanks for the question. Hydration of the flowers is one of the most important things because that contributes to the longevity of the flower, which as we've already identified is the number one objection. So anytime you can make flowers last longer, they have more value. Actually, what people usually don't realize is that flowers do last longer than any other gift because there's an emotion behind receiving flowers that you just don't get from getting just a, another gift of some type. So anytime you can give flowers, you're giving a special feeling as well. So we want to remember to add that feeling when we're creating designs for our customers that find out about the customer that they're servicing and or purchasing for and service them with customized designs with cremations changing our industry so strongly because with flowers for funerals there was a need for those and now we haven't established the need when the memorial services aren't held right away. People have the need to do something when someone was lost. When the memorials are scheduled at a later date, they kind of, that, that need time has passed. But what it does do is it allows the florist the time to prepare with the flowers that they, the customer really wants. If you might remember when we did just funeral work, it would come in so suddenly and you would just have to use what flowers you could get and maybe it wasn't the special flower they wanted for that person. Well now you can wait and get exactly what they want. A lot of times people are doing life celebrations which requires centerpieces or door badges like we just looked at or items that they might can give 
to gifts for people at home who are having meals in the home for the person celebration. Another thing I think is very interesting, you know how you see like Princess Di, for example, when she was deceased, people just put bouquets of flowers at places throughout the UK to signify the thoughts of her. I think that's something we could do in the U.S. also. You could make it a, a tradition in your area that people bought little bouquets that they could take, little hand-tied bouquets, and place at the memorial table for um, or a certain place that is a marker for that person, the picture table or something of that nature. A lot of florists are being successful in converting to cremation sales by making special things for the person. One florist said, we say, tell me about that person's life. And then we tell that story in flowers. If you go to the blog at oasisfloralproducts.com, go to our blog and go back into September to look at the cremation or, uh, blogs, someone's telling how they go in, Mike Whittle, it's telling how he goes in and, and creates that person's life so he tells their story and how people just are so appreciative. He goes in and puts out the pictures and adds in the, the memorial items and he said, it takes me 15 minutes and I have a customer for life. In the other blog, Scott Hasty said, I always recommend that they have something at home, but I talk to them about value pricing. I don't want them to think, well, it's just a cremation, it's not as important, we don't have to do as many things, because it is just as important. You want that same visual impact, whether it's for a casket cover or a conversation piece in the home with the family. Sharon, we have another question. Okay. This is from Kaylin, and she wants to know, are you soaking the mache, um, only adding water on the inside? Question. The question is, are you soaking the paper mache or just adding the water from the inside? We just set them out and added the water from the inside, so just the foam was soaking up the water. And that seems to work well, as opposed to dropping the whole paper mache down into water. Foam is supposed to uh, wick up the water in 90 seconds. I like to give it a little longer than that because I'm an old florist and we always did it longer. So you can decide for yourself. But I just think that if you add the water in, let it soak up in plenty of time before you add your flowers, very often you will find that the foam holds the water for the flowers and it doesn't get the backing all wet so that when you hang it on the easel it's a problem with dripping and that type of thing. Thank you. Now we're going to look at a design tray. I love design trays and Karen will show us one. The reason I love design trays, you can put again punch bowl, ornamentation, something of that nature. I've seen wedding cakes where a small cake stand is here and the cakes are atop the cake stand on each individual table. The thing that's great about this is you make your design in advance and then you pour the water in and the, the flowers stay wet because the water is trapped in the plastic bottom of the tray. So I think that's pretty cool. I'm grouping these materials because grouping gives greater visual impact. And each of the flowers that are grouped together, you can see each of the roses separately, and you can see separately the hypericum, but they're together for color and form. Now clustering, on the other hand, is like the carnations, where you put them so close together you can't tell one from the other, or the trachylium, this, so that you, um, or this is green tree, dianthus, but also trachylium, so you can place them together and, and they have that visual impact but you can't tell one flower for the other. That's the difference between grouping and clustering. With grouping you can see the individual flower, with clustering you can't. So by adding all my materials in, then let's say it's for a wedding. I can put this in on Thursday and they stay watered until it's time for the event either Friday night or Saturday. How can we use this for sympathy? Now we can add our urn here. We can add 
a stand with a photograph here. And our flowers are well watered. Gives us a, a good measure of flowers around. And yet it's not so large that it's not terribly expensive. We have a question from Kathy. Okay. Um, Kathy is saying, hi Sharon. Question, is Oasis moving into using Midnight Foam in the Sympathy Shapes? Kathy, thank you so much for the question. We're really excited about Midnight move Foam moving into a lot of our different products. It'll be interesting for you to see. Before you put it down, let me show real quick. This is the, the saddle, and then let's sit it on top of that. We keep the plastic on the paper. Thank you. That way we can drape down. So Kathy, we have added the foam in the midnight foam into like the floral foam tiles, and it's beginning to be added into a lot of the different shapes, like the design shape. So stay tuned and let's see what all we get the floral foam in in midnight because I love it. I think it's great to design with. Now again, thank you for your question. Again, this is the cat casket saddle and of course it works great when you're doing funeral work it gives you a good sturdy base water in the foam which matters so much it's made with max life foam which biodegrades in 567 days that's like a year and a half that's not that long in earth time and so we're just really excited about the advantages it gives us the flowers are longer lasting and work so much better for our designs so in this particular one I'm going to add a few little flowers in because we talked about varying prices. When you are speaking with your customer, you don't want to just give one price and you certainly don't want to say, uh, how much did you want to spend? You want to say, what are you interested in? Find out about the person's particular favorites and create a color harmony that works well. That's another way to up your sales for sympathy work. If you can have your customers tell you the color harmony that they're looking for, and then when other customers call in, you can match that. Uh, recently, someone said we were doing like five or six, usually, designs for cremations, and now we're up to like 18 because we're creating a whole look for the sanctuary or the funeral home. So we want to add in the different possibilities. What if it's orchids? What if it's roses? What if it's carnations? It's all a different price. But we also can use these. I like to use them atop pedestals, like at a wedding, because it's a good and balanced design, the holder that this is in. We can also use them like at the top of a banister, or we can use them in different spaces in a building where there might be an open ledge. They're great for church arrangements because you don't have to go back and pick up that container. Another product I love that I don't have in front of me now is the raquette because raquettes come in 18, 27, and 36 inch lengths and they're just narrow wrapped in plastic like this particular product is. You keep the plastic on. And then that can be on ledges for the holidays or ledges for an event for sympathy. So it makes it really easy to work with when you have easy mechanics that are geared for being lightweight, holding water, and keeping your flowers hydrated. Sharon, I have a question from Tina. Tina would like to know, will Oasis ever uh, make a shamrock reform? A shamrock. Now I'm going to have to go to Kelly Mace for this question because Kelly is the one that knows those answers and I don't. I just use what she gives me. <laughs> Kelly, do you think we'll make a shamrock? Well, um, we do have um, shamrocks in our other countries um, that um, Smithers produces, so stay tuned. Um, we could definitely take a look at that and send that to our product development. Thank you. There. So Kelly's saying maybe she'll look at it. Other countries have different products from what we have because different countries have different rules and regulations and they have different cultural uses and needs. So of the 22 Smithers Oasis companies, everybody has sort of their own product line. But sometimes we cross over. I was just in South Africa at the Johannesburg International Flower Show and I was with Oasis South Africa. And their product line is very diverse from our product line. So it's always very important to look and see if there are products that you're interested in. 
Smithers Oasis is a great company to ask that of. People ask us all the time, the design directors, there are seven of us. People ask us about the possibility of products. We take it back to the office and very often that's how those products are developed. The sealed brick garland that I showed you earlier, that was because they saw us always dipping foam into um, hot glue to seal the base and said, we can do that for you. So it works. The same with DV Flora. They're really interested in you and your needs. So always communicate with them of the things that you need for your floral business. One of the things that we like a lot um, at Smithers Oasis is the square wreath. Very often it's used for funeral work. You'll put a picture of the individual there, or you can sit it down on the table and put a large square urn or something. I like to use it for the holiday also because you can create a nice tablescape in a square form. You see that I already had the flowers down low. I'm letting you see right here my phone, and I'll cover that up. But then I want to add to create a larger scale design. I want you to see, by doing it in several different ways, the possibilities, because they're just with color combinations and flower forms and purpose of the designs. There's just so many ways you can use these products. Now we're getting down to the last 15 minutes of our time, so be sure that you get those questions in and let us answer. And then if we can't answer all of your questions in our time space, they'll be answered afterwards. So this is a great opportunity to, for you to find out information that you want to know. In this design I have roses, I have hydrangea, I have stock. And I'm varying the heights of all of it. Good sharp cuts to make it. Coming across the waterways so we get more water into our flowers. You know, it's so important that you use a high quality Max Life foam so that the flowers do have access to the water. And be sure to encourage your customers to fill it back in as well. One thing you might do if you want to build your sympathy business is to realize that your most important networking contact is your funeral director. Go to them and say, how can I change my business so that I can be of more service to your customers? And again, if you want to concentrate on customizing and personalizing your work, find out from the clients about the, the family member that they're wanting to to celebrate because when you emotionally connect with people over flowers it just gives them such a feeling of being understood you also might want to be in touch with local nursing homes and hospitals and such where people have a tendency to to be visited by their families and so that you maybe can give to those facilities a coupon for them to give to families that when they've lost a loved one, then they can come to you. You might want to also reach out when you're working with groups to let them know that you have special possibilities. A lot of places now with life celebration centers are doing showers and weddings and all of those spaces in places that we traditionally thought of as sympathy. But now the bereavement community is moving forward and overlapping, so how can you serve those people with your business? It's a wonderful time to explore, we're gonna go in theory now, to explore ways to connect with people over flowers. Now, as I add in my Ethereum, you'll notice I want to come up with some of them really tall, even though this form flower has a different look to it and adds something because it's a different texture as well as a different form. And texture is the luxury of design. It's kind of like the fur coat, the chenille bedspread, the terry cloth robe that's so snuggly. Anytime you can add a different texture to a design, like rough versus smooth, matte versus shiny, soft versus hard. It gives the eyes a little something extra to delight in.
So I'm adding these into place, and you see this design could hold just the little flowers clustered at the base, and now it can hold the flowers standing up tall. We could even go higher with branches if we chose to. We're gonna add a little bit of tulip stem to the design because they'll open and that'll give us yet another form. How do you get your customers to explore things that are different and, and that you haven't tried before? One of the things you wanna do is really take the time to invest in your photo, photographs of your work that you want to sell on both your personalized website or your social media pages so that people see what the possibilities are. They don't have the opportunity to learn everything about flowers like you do, so you are the medium that lets them know what's possible with flowers. So take those photos, use them on your website, use them in social spaces, and let people know what the opportunities to celebrate with flowers are. Now we're gonna add a little bit of dendrobium orchids and we've just made a big festival of flowers for our design. So let's recap the things that we are thinking of. Our products can be used for wedding, for sympathy, for holiday, all the same products, but in different usage and different ways. So let us know which ones of the arrangements and the products you enjoyed most. Sharon, we have a question. Uh -huh. um, can we somehow order the Oasis forms offered in other countries? I get a lot of airplane orders for sympathy and it would be so much easier to get the Oasis form instead of me carving it out of sheet forms. Um, someone else said the same thing they would like to know as well. They often get asked for the gates of heaven peace. Again, I'm going to have to defer to Kelly Mace because she knows more about yes, that than I do. I would I love to know which shapes um, your customers uh, would like for us to bring in. So definitely, I'm hearing right now um, a shamrock, uh, gates of heaven, airplanes. So we can definitely, with those comments, we can go ahead and take a look at that and see you know, what we can bring in here into the States. Okay, you got it straight from Kelly May, so Smithers <laughs> well, we'll and Oasis, we're going to look at Thank it. You. It's not always possible. Right. Again, let me review that different uh, uh, restrictions from different countries and different cultural issues, there's a lot of different things that fall in place, but she's going to look at it. You let us know what it is that you're looking for and we'll see how possible that is. One thing you can do is go to the other Smithers Oasis pages to look and see what products are available there that might work for you. And then if we can't bring in those specific ones, maybe we can get really close. But Kelly said she will look at it and she is the person who needs to have that information. So good for you for asking her. Now today, we got uh, a bunch of uh, uh, thank yous for that. Yeah. So oh, good. Just, yeah, excited. Good, good. Yes. Good, good. So lots of new shapes coming. Lots of new <laughs> shapes on the way. And can they? Here's my question: Can they be a midnight foam? <laughs> I love the midnight foam. So, any other questions for me before we? Um, before we move, we want to know what things are interesting to you how you can use your materials. Let's review really quickly on the care and handling of products because that makes a big difference. Using our Floral Life products, you really can enhance the life of your flowers. So when your flowers come in, remove the lid of the box so that the ethylene gas escapes while you're processing your beautiful DV Flora flowers. And then you want to clean your buckets with DCD. Mark inside your buckets five to seven inches of water is how much you need in every bucket of water. So take a marker and mark inside your bucket so you'll always be consistent with the amount of water you put into the design, I mean into the bucket. And then when you wash with DCD, turn the buckets upside down to drain. If you set them on the floor and then stack them back up, you just put more germs back into the bucket. So let them drain. Add in your water. You can actually take your um, water sample and send it to Flora Life, and they can tell you exactly how much of the flower food you want to use. I recommend 
Express. An Express 200 has less sugar, so if you want them to stay longer in the cooler, you go with that. But Express 300 has more of the flour foods in terms of the sugars that help the flowers to open. So if you're wanting them to open quickly for wedding or sympathy work or holiday design for big events, you wanna go with Express 300. Put that into your water and the water actually, the, the flowers absorb from the outside, making the flowers fresher and you, you wanna take off all of the foliages below the water, but you don't have to recut every time, which is a great asset. Because what we said, the lesser number of times you handle a flower, the more money you make off of it. So then you put the flowers into the water and after they've hardened for a while, put them into the cooler. You also want to use, as we said with hydrangea, give it a good cut and dip it in quick dip. You pour just a little bit of quick dip in a small bowl and dip it in and you can use it for multiple flowers up to 24 hours. Pour it out and then do another. And then when you take your hydrangea back out, give it another dip before you put it into your floral foam. You want to put your floral foam on top of the water and let it just sink down into the water so that it hydrates on its own because as the water comes in, the air goes out. You don't want any dry pockets inside there. So you actually saturate the foam with water with flower foods in it and that helps as well. On a lot of our shapes at this time, we will want to take waterproof tape and move it around so it gives a little extra security and we want to pour water in from the top. You had a question, John? Yes. Do you find that the midnight soap, the foam soaks up water as well as the regular? Yes, the question is, does the midnight foam soak up water as well as the classic green? Absolutely. We get that question a lot because if you remember the rainbow foam, it didn't saturate with water the same and it didn't have, well, it was a different density when you actually designed in it. Midnight foam is just like classic. It's just another color. It's like having a little black dress of your floral foam available. Sharon, another question. Do you quick dip all, all your stems? I, the question is, do you quick dip all the stems? I especially do hydrangea and Gerber daisies and roses and such. A lot of times I don't do bulb flowers. The quick dip helps them to hydrate and open up and absorb the water more quickly. And spring bulbs, daffodils, tulips, iris and such, they have a tendency to open quickly anyway. I don't think they're needed. All the other flowers, the answer is yes. Any other questions? One question I often get is, how do you get customers to try something new and different? Again, it's your job to be the resource that helps them to see those ideas. Maybe you wanna do a space in your shop where you put a pedestal or a table or something and you try a unique design each time, especially bridal bouquets and such so that the people coming into your store see those materials and think, oh, I'd like to have that for my wedding. Another thing is to get your flowers really, really early and fresh and add them into buckets of water around your sales counter ahead of time and let them open there until they get open enough to go into the cooler for keeping. That way the flowers kind of give out a fragrance and a color and a form to the design and creates an impulse sale. You can mix a few of your faux botanicals in buckets in, mix in with them so they kind of can't tell one from the other and that helps to upsell also. When people are coming into your store, you want to be sure to have your latest, greatest items to the right hand side of the store so it catches their eye. The vast majority of people are right-handed, so they look in that direction first. And then have them move through the store to your specialty items in the back so that you're pulling them with your products through the store. And in your cooler space, either decorate your cooler space with arrangements and blends of products mixed in or just outside of the cooler if you don't have that room. Creating an impulse buy is especially important at the holidays. You can also mix with your flowers in your buckets. Go ahead and create a mix of color harmonies and themes of your flowers. So when people come in and they buy bouquets, they just choose flowers to make a hand tie bouquet or they're going to make their bouquets at home, 
the flowers always match better when they come from your shop because you've strategically created that color harmony ahead of time. Any other questions from Kelly or John? Okay, this is the time for your um, questions was up, but you can still go online and leave us some more. And you can go into the blog and leave us questions at the um, bottom of each blog also. Again, that's oasisfloralproducts.com forward slash floral dash ideas. And today we have been hosted so generously by DV Flora. We thank you, Tim, so much for letting us come in and share our products and you sharing your beautiful flowers with us. Sharon, it was a fantastic presentation. We really thank you for thank everything you. that you've done. Thank you so we, much. We've been talking to customers recently and they're asking for education. And so we partnered with Smith's, Smithers Oasis to bring educational programs to you. Doing it via Facebook Live we think is the most uh, the best way for outreach to meet the, to hit the most amount of people. Uh, and also if you didn't get to, uh, if, if you know friends that wanted to, to be involved in this today, uh, information will be available on our blog and please tell everybody about about watching this so you can watch repeat versions so thank you so much for joining us today and once again thank you Sharon thank Fantastic. you so much we we're so glad you joined with us because it's great to share a passion for flowers with other Absolutely. people thank you we have we have one other question it's a okay. late late question it's okay though from Cindy Jones Reynolds will we ever see other colors of foam used to love the color foam from years ago Kelly Mace, Kelly. that's a question for you. Um, that was our rainbow, our uh, rainbow, rainbow foam, which was a little, was a different consistency uh -huh. and a different formula. Um, so right now it's just the black foam, but. Mm -hmm. Now Cindy, if you haven't tried the Midnight, try it because you're going to fall in love with it. But it is different from the rainbow and we do not have the rainbow right now. We're not planning to bring that back anytime soon. But the, the Midnight Foam, that's a great opportunity to try something different. And I, I'm Sharon McGookin. Leave me questions on my Facebook or Instagram page. I'm willing to help also. And, um, of course, on the Smithers Oasis. And you want to give us the address to your uh, yeah, tvflora.com, and from there you can get to our blog, uh, our Facebook site, our Instagram site, etc. Et so please join us on social media and share this fantastic program with your floral friends. Please hit that button and share.